It's actually a really funny story because the guy who developed the protocol mm -hmm. is this guy Henderson, who is this Scandinavian guy. And he knew from his experience as a scientist that it's easier to heal a tendon once it ruptures than when you have a tendinopathy. Mm -hmm. It's shorter, the time period, you get more complete healing. So what he was trying to do is he had an Achilles tendon injury. Yeah, he had Achilles tendinopathy. And so what he was trying to do is he's trying to rupture it. And he thought the best way that I can get the most load through this is if I put all the weight I can and I just try and hold it there and slowly go down. <laughs> what he found out is that it actually fixed his... Achilles tendon. <laughs> and this is where we got this whole system. This is like what they used to do with racehorses. So that was the genesis. But if he wanted to rip it, all he had to do is take that big heavy weight and move super fast. Yeah. Because now you have the, what we call jerk. Mm -hmm. And so for our tendons, again, jerk is not just that person that you hate in the world. It's actually a physical property. So where I am, that's my location. The rate of change of my location, that's my velocity. Mm -hmm. The rate of change of my velocity, that's my acceleration. Everybody's good up till now. The rate of change of my acceleration, that's jerk. Mm -hmm. So when I'm accelerating one way, so I'm going to do a snatch and I'm going to accelerate up. The bar, gravity is accelerating down. So when I hit that bar and I get that catch, that catch is jerk. That's why that's where we get the most injury. The reason I get tennis elbow, I'm swinging a tennis racket in one direction. The ball is going the other direction. I get a small amount of jerk that goes through the tendon. Mm -hmm. The reason I get golfer's elbow on the inside is I'm swinging through. I'm going to hit, and it doesn't usually happen on grass because there's not too much resistance. It happens much more on the synthetic surfaces. Now I get that jerk in the opposite direction. Now I get pain on the inside of the elbow. But it's the same thing with jumpers. Jumpers get jumper's knee because they're doing these dynamic moves. Mm -hmm. Jerk is the thing that's going to induce injury. Jerk is that rate of change of acceleration. Mm -hmm. So now, the reason that eccentrics were working is because it wasn't about eccentric. It had nothing to do with that because Michael Kerr's beautiful work. If you do really heavy strength training, it has the exact same effect as eccentric. The reason is when I lift a weight that's heavy, I have to go slowly. The core of the eccentric training was to do a slow eccentric. It had nothing to do with the eccentric. It had nothing to do with the concentric. It was the tempo. It had to do with the velocity. And so when we realized yeah. that the velocity was the key, then we said, okay, what is it about velocity? So if we keep velocity at zero, now what we should see is we should see the biggest bang for our buck. And so all we had to do is make the velocity of the movement zero, and suddenly we got load through the whole tendon. That's fascinating. So the whole eccentric thing, which has become kind of scripture in a lot of places, just like rice, which we might talk about, right? <laughs> the rest, ice, compression, elevation, which we'll talk about at some point, hopefully, if we have time. It was a false positive in a sense, right? Or they thought it worked because of the eccentric nature of the movement, but it wasn't that at all. It was the reduction of velocity. Exactly. And maximal reduction of velocity is isometric. Yeah. And so if you're trying to hold the weight while you're doing that slow eccentric load, yeah, the weight is good, but from our engineered ligaments, it didn't matter whether we did a big movement or a little movement or a heavy movement. Or, what mattered was we got load through the cells so the cells could sense the load and that we did it and we could stop at about 10 minutes. And those were the two things that, that made the difference. Do you see any difference? I don't know if you were testing this in the lab, but back to the original question about intervals or duration of stressor, right? 10 seconds on, 50 seconds off for 10 minutes straight versus like 30 seconds on, two minutes off, 30 seconds on, two minutes off. Absolutely. Have you been able to draw any, not necessarily conclusions, but inferences, yeah. hypotheses worth testing as to what might be better? We actually do have really good data there. What we know is that when, when the tenant is pretty much healthy, we can do shorter duration isometrics. So we can do one to 10 second isometrics when we've got pretty good health. That'll get us our maximal signal without a problem. If I'm recovering from an injury and the more mature the injury, the more problematic it is. Now, the system that shielded the injury is much better at shielding. So now mm. I need longer for that to relax. So what it's akin to the rock has done a little bit of aerobic exercise now. So he's going to hold on a little bit tighter for a little bit longer. So I need to go for a longer period. If I've been training 
my big partner to do those longer duration things. So mm -hmm. if they have been having to shield the injury for longer, now it takes me a longer isometric to get to the point where I can get that load evenly across the tissue. What would be the minimal effective duration for a long-standing injury? Let's just say tennis elbow. What would a reasonable duration look like? So the reason that we've gone with 30 seconds is we can do this. We can take out the tendons from animals. We can pull them in our machine and we can watch the stress or the force that we need to hold it at that distance apart go down and it goes down exponentially. And by about 30 seconds is about 85% of the way to the bottom. And if you yep. wait out to two minutes, you only get about 15% more. Diminishing returns. Exactly. At 10 seconds, you're still coming down a fairly steep curve, but you're getting some stress relaxation. But by 30 seconds, you've turned the corner and you're basically getting diminishing returns from there. And so that's why for the, for the injured tendons, we're going at that 30 second hold. And then mm -hmm. when you've got somebody like Emil, who's, who's doing pretty well, now we can go with a shorter hold. The other thing when we're talking about the climbers is the tendons aren't as big. Mm -hmm. So I don't need as long on my flexor tendon in my finger as I do on my patella tendon or my Achilles tendon. Right. My Achilles is my biggest tendon in my body. It's going to take longer for the strong parts to relax than if I am looking at my flexor tendons.